Hey everyone, it's Mari. Welcome back to my channel. I have another project today for the Vicky Booten design team. I'm going to be creating this 12 by 12 layout that you see here on the screen. I'm starting off with this really sweet photo that I have printed in a square orientation. I believe it's probably about four by four, something in that neighborhood, printed in color. And that photo is definitely my color inspiration today. I decided not to use the pink Vicky Booten art crayon. I'm using the blue, the yellow, and the green and I'm going to start off with a piece of foundations paper here I'm going to spritz a bit of water on there and then I'm going to activate my colors of crayons I'm going to be using I'm going to just scribble those out onto some plastic packaging that packaging is actually the cover of the foundations paper that comes with the, the paper I usually just take that off and cut it up and it works really well for packaging for as you can see, mixing up the art crayons or for using the stencil brush or whatever. So anyway, I am going to now just apply the green. I'm going to start off with that really nice, vibrant, pretty green color. I'm going to put a little bit of it on with the brush and a little bit with packaging. And once I'm happy with the amount of green that's on there at that time, I'm going to go in and start doing some splattering. I'll splatter with the larger brush and with a smaller brush just to vary the size of the little brush dots and I'm also adding the yellow you can see that I've activated the yellow and I've also activated the blue crayon as well so I'm going to have a combination of those three colors worked in together here in an L shape or I should say a reverse L shape on the left side of the paper so you can see that it's just kind of forming a corner in that on that uh, sorry, right side of the paper. So I've got a reverse L shape <laughs> on the right side of my paper and you can just see how it's formulating in that shape. And I'm just going to continue to go in and add some splatters and I don't let the splatters completely dry before I move on. I just take a piece of paper towel and dab up the splatters before they're completely dry. And in that way, it's just going to be a little bit softer looking if you want the splatters or the pigment to show up a little bit more completely let it dry on its own before you or you know just completely eliminate that step of using the paper towel to dab up some of the pigment if you do that the pigment obviously is going to be a lot darker and it just depends on the look that you're going for now I'm going to imitate the mixed media that I did in that reverse L shape in on the right side by creating a little corner on the left and that upper left hand corner is going to be obviously smaller as you can see I just want to create uh, or leave a white space in the center and a white margin sort of a border around the outside edges and that's kind of the what I was thinking I might like to do when I started working on this I didn't really have a plan. I was just kind of going with the shape of my photo and where I wanted my photo to be because my little great niece in the photograph is um, looking to the left in the photo. I wanted to keep the photo over to the right and have the majority of the details on the left, if that makes sense. So here you can just see now, I've decided I wanna add some black just to add a little contrast here. And of course, black is a nice neutral that really adds some pop on your layout so you're just going to see me adding some splatters and some drips and so on and so forth I will actually um, go ahead and dab some of that up just before it dries really really super dark I just want that to be nice and subtle on there as well and one way that you can do that with the bigger droplets is to just kind of put your paper towel in the center first and get the majority of the moisture picked up and then it just is better when you dab the paper towel in a little bit more of a heavy handed way so that it doesn't spread that pigment out too much. So, and then it just kind of retains the shape of that drip a little bit better when you do it that way. And I've got that all done now. I have scribbled out the green and blue on the dry uh, plastic packaging there now. I've dried that all up and I've added the dry crayon on there. I'm not using any moisture with it. Picking that up with the Vicky Booten dry stencil brush and adding a dry brushing technique through this stencil from Storyteller to the two different corner areas. And I'm kind of trying to bring that up a little bit into the white. 
Uh, I end up covering a lot of this up and I go in a little bit later and add more of the stenciling down a little bit lower in the lower center portion and then on the right kind of up towards the top a little bit but I'm just blending the green and blue together so that I end up with kind of like a variable color uh, on that in that stenciling area I just like how that looks it's really subtle it's really soft and this is all about the layering the different um, you know using the different tools and different techniques to layer the color so that you get lots of dimension and interest in that uh, pattern on the back or on the base of your layout now I wanted to use that quill paper from the 8 by 6 paper pad on my photo mat and I'm going to start off here by putting some craft foam on the back of my photo. I'm going to layer a little bit of tissue paper just for a little bit of extra texture and I am going to do some distressing here so I just like to add something that's got that texture to it in the photo mat. So I'm going to put a little bit of that tissue paper. I'm going to uh, cut it off just so that there's just a tiny little bit of the tissue paper sticking out around the edges of the photo I didn't want too much and I'm going to adhere that down to a piece of that 8 by 6 quill pattern paper and then I'll trim that up and distress the edges of that as well and I liked using I like using that black on the photo mat because you know the the layout's very very soft and this black is just a little bit unexpected and it just is uh, adds a, a lot of focus to the photo in that way I really like that and I am going to use black here and there in another another couple places here so watch for that as the layout unfolds that you can see how I bring that black in the the dark black not just that you know sort of like the art crayon faded black that I have on there so far I want to add a little bit of prominent black as well so here I'm just taking my paper distressing tool I'm going to distress the edges of that pattern paper there and that will finish up my photo mat layers at this point. I'm taking a, this is a stamp from my stash. I think it's a studio light stamp, but I just wanted something that would add a little bit of a background and you could just use, you know, whatever you have. You can use one of Vicky's stamps or from another collection uh, or from Storyteller if you want, if you feel like you have one, if you're doing this technique one of the storyteller um, stamps as well. And I'm just adding that texture. I wanted something in a tiny floral because this is going to have a bunch of floral embellishments on it. I'm using a Versifying Claire. I think this is Morning Mist ink and I'm doing second and third generation stamping there in those corner areas. Now I took one of the journaling cards from Storyteller. I love this one. It says Adventure Highlights and I thought that was just perfect for this little photo because I thought um, my niece might want to do some documenting of the adventures that these two take on a daily basis where they are as they get outside and enjoy the um, weather that they have. I actually fussy cut this number two from one of the ephemera pieces. I'm going to show you this piece a little bit later. It's that large flashcard that says two plus two and I just thought this was perfect because it's green and yellow and it and she's two. This sweet little girl is two so I just thought eh that's perfect I'm going to use that so I fussy cut it and distress it and it's going to be part of the title now I also fussy cut a bunch of the daisies from the daisy paper in both the 8 by 6 and 12 by 12 and I have those ready to go and I'm just using one of the ephemera uh, little tickets as well uh, over to the left of that journaling card and here you're just going to see me kind of trying to get an idea of where I'm going to place these daisies the logical place to create my visual triangle is to the right of the photo to the left of the journaling card and up in the corner so those just seem like um a logical place to create that triangle for myself and then of course the journaling card is going to be where the journaling will will go later when um, my niece adds that in once she receives this layout soon I'm going to have a big box of layouts to send to her again it's going to be fun so here you can just see I'm just uh, sorting out which daisies I want to go where and I'm going to add these on with foam adhesive so that they are layered and you know there's some there's some space or some air in between the different layers of daisies so that it does add dimension to your layout in that way and this is a really easy technique to create dimension on your projects so foam adhesive is you know 
really, really important <laughs> when you're trying to create layers on your projects for sure. I, I like to add glue dots too. When I want just a tiny little little bit of dimension, I will layer some, some glue dots on top of each other as well. Now I'm just taking my scissors and I'm just roughly cutting a really messy edge on the left and the right edges of the foundations paper. And you know, it's, I'm going for wonky here. It's, you know, you can see that there's a lot of distressing. This layout isn't meant to be, you know, like perfection. It's, it's meant to be like, well, you know, I guess perfection in one state in the sense that it's like a distressed look, right? So um, I want to continue with that theme, that look. And so to do that, I am just creating a really distressed edge on each of the different sides by creating that wonky line and then taking my distressing tool and distressing the paper here. I just want to rough it up and I'm actually going to bend it and fold it here in a bit and just really distress the heck out of it. And I'm, I'm going to sew it, take it down to my sewing machine. I like to try to sew on my project before I add adhesive to it where I'm going to sew. It's a little tip. If you do want to use your sewing machine and it's a sewing machine that's not dedicated to crafting, like you still use it for fabric, which I do all the time. I do a lot of sewing. Um, I don't like to get any adhesive in my sewing machine. So I try to sew the paper before I, I've added adhesive to it. So to those side areas, I'm going to add a bunch of wonky stitching. I'm going to add some zigzag and straight stitch. And then I'm just going to take a piece of the quill paper, um, the 12 by 12 quill paper, and add a strip of that on each of the edges on the left and right. So you can see how I've got a strip on the left and a strip on the right there. I'm going to adhere those down. And how I make sure that this is a true 12 by 12 is because I have taken some sizing off of the edges, is I actually lay this on a piece of 12 by 12 paper and I adhere the strips on either side, those black strips of quill paper, to the blank 12 by 12 paper that I'm using to help me size my layout. And um, sometimes I'll take that off. Sometimes I will just leave it right on the back of the, the project. It just kind of depends. but. Um, there you can see I've got that all adhered down now and the stitching is on there. So I wanted to add some more layering in the photo mat area. So I'm taking a piece of pattern paper from the 8x6 uh, paper pad. This is the one that has the, the green text on it. I love that paper. It's one of my favorites. It's so cool. And I'm just going to add some texture to that with one of the punches from my stash. It's just a notebook punch. Now I was thinking I would add a layer with that. And that's another one of the uh, journaling cards from the four by six journaling paper, uh, cut apart paper from Storyteller. I actually end up taking this off later. I didn't like the addition of the craft. I just felt like there wasn't craft anywhere else. And I just, I don't know, I'd, I felt like it looked out of place. So I ended up taking that off and I just end up going with this notebook punch paper uh, for a layer on my on my photograph so I'm gonna show you how I'm adding that in but I end up taking it off later but you know you could you could add another layer in here maybe you like the looks of it let me know in the comments did you like the this uh, other journaling card behind there or not I kind of just thought it was too much so I took it off but that's just my eye like if you followed me for a while you know like I I don't add a ton of stuff to my projects typically. They, I don't know, usually I follow a less is more kind of a rule of thumb. So there you can see I've got a, some leaves added on there from the songbird paper, which I fussy cut. I'm looking at adding some stickers. I added one to the top cluster of daisies and that one says um, spread sunshine, which I just thought was perfect. And it's um, yellow, so it's the right color, obviously. I'm gonna grab this tab sticker. This one says simple joy. And I actually am going to, that'll end up getting moved because I take that layer of, um, paper off the the photo mat like I mentioned before when I take that other journaling card off of there that sticker gets moved down but you get the gist of what I'm going for here I'm going to use some of the hearts on the puffy phrase sticker sheets I love those sheets of puffy stickers they're so awesome especially the little bits that are included there too because they're great for filling in little areas that you might want to fill in 
And I'm just at this point, just adding some little details like that, because I just like to do that. So I'm going to add some of these little puffy hearts. I'm actually going to go to the um, stars as well. You know, the little star, the little stars, uh, puffy stars that are part of Storyteller that you can get to. I ed ended up adding a few of those around too. And now I'm just going to splatter with some black acrylic paint. So that's going to add some, you know, a real dramatic black pop there. I'm not adding too much water to it so that it is pretty black. You can definitely really see that. And I just wanted a little bit of just a tiny little bit of solid black here and there. And I like how that looks. And I'm also going to add a little bit of gold too. So this is some Heidi Swap Color Shine. Just going to add some of that on here. And I like how that looks as well. I've been, I've definitely been in a gold splatters kind of a back to gold splatters mode lately. This is that piece of ephemera that I used for the two. And here you can see I've basically finished up. I show you here that I've added a couple more of those leaves from the fussy cut uh, songbird paper. I moved uh, the leaves that were in the lower left cluster area there. I moved them to underneath or to the bottom of the daisies instead of on top. I just felt like it was balanced a little bit more there. And yeah, I'm basically finished. I just showing, I'm showing you here how I added the stenciling. I re-added some more stenciling to the bottom and the top. And then here I'm just showing you how I took off that extra journaling card that had the craft on it in the photo mat uh, layers there, just because I, I just thought it looked better. So that's the piece that I took off there. I am all finished. I love how this turned out. I hope you did too. Don't forget to leave me a comment. If you have not subscribed, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And I have added some uh, still shots here as well. And in the description box below, I have linked up to Vicky's Facebook community. I've linked up to Vicky's blog. And I've also linked to the products that I've used here today. And if you stick here, stick around to the very end, I believe I have linked up to some other videos. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'll see you soon.